Hey everybody, it's Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini, and welcome to episode number 80 of Whip Wednesday. I'm coming to y'all from my home crafting studio here in North Central Florida. If you are just tuning into our program and you're here as a new viewer, welcome. This is a weekly live chat where I answer pre-submitted questions that you can fill out on a form. The link for that is going to be in the caption and in the video description box below. If you have a question for me that you'd like me to consider answering in a future episode, you can do that. But the ones that I have here today are going to touch on things like fabric cutting, uh, quality of especially our 100% quilting cotton fabrics, and then we have some questions about fussy cutting and working with directional prints. So I am going to get started. Let me pop into the chat and make sure that everyone can see me and hear me fine. Hi, Miss Diane, tuning in from Maryland. Clovis in the house from Indiana. Hey, everybody. Pat is tuning in from Tucson, Arizona, and Debbie from Central Ohio. Great. Hey, Margie. All right, so I hope that y'all can see me and hear me just fine. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first question I have here is from Nancy. Two Nancys actually asked similar questions, so we're going to touch on these together. Okay, uh, the questions are, how do you know if a fabric is high quality or not? I'm a beginner-ish, they say. And then the other question said, please let us know how to determine what is a quality fabric and what isn't. I'm still learning how to work with cotton woven fabrics. I haven't graduated to knits yet. All right, so we are going to get started talking a little bit about fabric quality. Now, when I was in law school a long time ago, I worked at Joanne Fabrics. It was kind of my getaway, my escape, just putting fabric bolts back on the shelf, or we'd have like um, sorority girls or parents that had kids that were in school come in and they have like a project in mind. And so I was like, follow me. And I would take them to where the different fabrics were for the different types of projects that they were planning to make. Or, you know, sometimes they'd come in like, hey, we have a toga party. And I'm like, do you sew? If they'd say no, I'd take them over to like stretch knit white fabrics that you could just cut up. They weren't going to fray and they could make some cute knotted outfits. So things like that. So I got to see in my time working at Joanne Fabrics, I got to see a lot of fabrics and being that I was learning how to quilt and sew at that same time, I feel like that was a really good jump right into fabrics and textiles. Okay. So for me, so that is kind of some of the experience that I'm going to be basing what I'm talking about on today. And I wanted to pull out a stack. You know, I actually went into several of my bins to prepare for these questions and was looking like, where do I have some like big box store fabric, like Joanne Fabrics type stuff. And I couldn't find anything because of course I have run an online shop that sold, that sells fabrics. And we had a brick and mortar store where we sold quality designer quilting cotton. So it was tricky for me to find this, but I did because last year I actually went to Joanne's to pick up some prints that would match some other ones I had in my stash to make my Halloween table runner. So some of y'all may have seen this because I think I talked about this around Halloween time last year. And so this is just a table runner that I made um, using the peak block and my 10 inch slicer. So on this project for something like this home decor, I'm more than happy to mix and match different fabrics, especially when I'm looking kind of for like a color theme. And so I wanted to pull this stack out for me having these fabrics here. I can tell just by touching them. And if you have been quilting for a long time, you probably know what I'm talking about, where without even looking at the selvage, we can kind of tell if it's a designer quality quilting cotton or one from a big box store. So like this feels like art gallery to me, which I'm pretty sure it is. It is. If you're not familiar with art gallery fabrics, they are designer quality quilting cottons but they have like a crisper, but lighter hand. They're really drapey. So they're great when you're working on like baby quilts where you don't want to have a really stiff cotton. Everything here is going to be hundred percent quilting cotton. All the stuff that you look at or look for in a big box store is going to say quilting cottons. You might see a big wall in a shop that says calico prints. That's all kind of the same thing that we're talking about is our 100% cotton fabrics that we use mostly for quilting, but you can make whatever you want out of it, right? A lot of the bag projects, wallets, home deck stuff, pouches, little gifts. What else? Bowl cozies, like all that kind of stuff. We use cotton fabric because it's easy to wash, right? It's hundred percent cotton. We can wash it easily. Now this is not fabric that I personally use for garments for myself, an adult body with curves in different places. This fabric is not going to drape like you'd want it to. So for garments, I prefer to make myself stretch knit garments. However, for younger kids, my kids got a bunch of stuff made out of quilting cottons because it's kind of more just up and down, put a little elastic on the waistband and you're off, right? 
So just keep in mind that you can use these 100% cotton fabrics for lots of different things is basically what I'm trying to say with that. Now, this fabric, if you sew garments or you're trying to get into sewing garments, I would not consider this lightweight. For quilters, you might only work with these type of cotton fabrics, and so you may consider art gallery designer quality fabrics lightweight because compared to the rest in the same genre of fabrics, right, they are lightweight. But this is more like a medium weight cotton. It, it doesn't have as much drape, okay, as a cotton shirting or a cotton voile or something like that that you would use more for garments, okay? Now, I, can, I mean, I can tell even just by touching it. This is super soft art gallery, designer quality. This, this, this. I can see the sheen almost that the fabric has to it. This, 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 and this is a designer quality. Or this is, no, this is too stiff. This has to be Joanne's. It is Joanne. So you can tell just in the hand. A couple other things that I can tell just from using it is when you wash a, a fabric, like a lower quality fabric, it's usually going to have a... Um, a less dense weave. It's not going to be as tightly woven as some of the higher quality stuff. And because of that, and it's a natural fiber, when you wash this stuff, it's going to shrink more than the designer quality stuff. Now, we're not talking a ton, but where designer quality stuff might shrink one to three percent is typically what the manufacturers would say. Some of the other lower quality stuff might shrink more than that, you know, a little bit more. So if you're going to be using something like you found a great print and you just need to incorporate it into a project with other fabrics, just buy a little bit more of this one so that if you're going to pre-wash it and pre-shrink it, uh, you don't end up, you know, with less fabric that you need for your project. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, it, it just has a rougher hand to it. The finish on it is nowhere near as soft as some of the other prints. So that's something else to tell too. But of course, if you're just starting off and you're building up a fabric stash to work with, you're not going to know until you have touched a lot of different fabrics, then you'll remember and you'll be able to easily compare. When we had our brick and mortar store, I would have customers that would come in and ask, what's that soft fabric that I got last time I was here? So they only know it by the hand and it would be this, this art gallery fabrics in different prints. So they're like, yeah, it just felt different than all my others. And that's how, you know, that, that is kind of like a specialty thing. So I can tell art gallery from any of the others, but one thing that I would say from the lower quality fabrics and it, because they're lower quality doesn't mean that they're bad or that you shouldn't use them. Just if you're going to make this, you know, an amazing heirloom piece where you've designed the quilt and it's going to be in your family for generations, you could still use, you know, a mix of fabrics. You can use some lower quality fabrics. Just know that the colors might fade a little bit more. If it's something that's going to be, uh, it's going to have a lot of wear and tear and you're planning to wash a ton I would try to get something a little bit higher quality so you have that built-in durability, color fastness, and all this kind of stuff, right? So one of the questions was asking, how can you tell? So the first uh, factor would be the price. If you walk into a store and that's the regular price and it's just way lower than what you're, you've seen at other places, or if you walk into an independently owned quilt shop, you can easily tell the price difference. So usually if it's lower price, not that cotton fabric is really low in price these days, you know, the prices of everything keep going up, but say the fabric is $13.50 a yard at an independent quilt shop. If you walk into a big box store and you see some fabric that you like and it's $8.99 a yard, that's you know, usually going to be a, a, a good flag for you to look out for. Like this is not going to be the bestest, bestest stuff, but you know, you could still use it in your projects. Now, a lot of the fabrics that I bought when I first started were from Joann's. That's all we had. And that's all I could get my hands on. That's all I could afford. And so a lot of that fabric that I had left in my stash ended up being used when I taught a lot of kids classes. So they're great. You know, I mean, it's still hundred percent cotton fabric. Just wash it. You know, if you're going to be making a baby quilt that's going to be washed hundreds of times, you could, I've made plenty of quilts with Joanne fabrics, right? But again, if you're wanting a higher quality product, something a little bit more lightweight, that's not going to be distorting on you as you cut, sew, and press it, that's where you can start to kind of tell the difference in the fabrics itself. So like in this finished project, because it has already been washed and it's only been washed once, I did want to show you all this. The lighter weight fabrics that are the designer quality ones, they still, I can feel it. It still has some of that sheen and that slickness to it that it had just straight off the bolt. Whereas the black print that you see here, yeah, that's the only print I have here that I got from Joann's. This black print, it's black on the background, but it's already faded. 
So yes, I got the cute little skeletons and the candy corn I wanted in there, but I can see it. I already see like a white fuzz on top of it. It, it like the, it's it, the black is turning almost like a charcoal gray. And that's only after one wash. So keep that in mind. If you're choosing lower quality, dark fabrics, that's going to be an indication too, that it's not the best quality stuff, but does it still look cute in my table runner? Absolutely. Okay. So that's that. Boom, 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 making sure. And I was just going to say, you can see this. I want to say this is the same amount of fabric. And this fabric is like a lot thinner, more compact because it has a lighter weight. And this is like crispier, like it just has rougher edges. You can see too, this is another thing. This fabric is from Joann's. And although it's black fabric here, you can see that the back is white, meaning the fabric is not fully saturated in the black dye. And so that is also probably a contributing factor to after being washed, it's already starting to fade a little bit because it's not that richly dyed either. Okay. But that's just to give you a little idea. Hopefully, you know, you can kind of start to get an idea for it, but of course, touching it and working with it. If you buy half a yard of two different fabrics, a lower quality one and a higher quality one, and you wash it and you see that one shrunk significantly, that's, you can usually tell which was which in that case. Okay. Now, um, one of the things I wanted to mention too, is that we have some of our quilting cottons on sale right now in the online shop that one of those black and white prints is this one. And I actually listed it already. This is art gallery fabrics. Can you see how that like just, oh, the drape is amazing. The color, although this is a black and white print too, it does not change like the hand on both the top and the back. It's still a little white here, but the dye goes a little bit more through because it almost looks like the same design on front and back. So you know that the color, the color fastness of this black print here is going to last longer as well. Okay. And it's, um, they say on their salvages that it's hundred percent premium cotton. It's so drapey like this is stuff. I mean, I still wouldn't probably use it for, well, you're not really going to make fitted garments with this kind of stuff for adults, but for a kid in a warmer climate, this would make a nice little loose top a skirt, anything like that you could use it for. So anyway, we have um, a sale running right now in our shop. We put all of our, and they're all designer quality quilting cottons. They're $4.50 per half yard. So it comes out to $9 a yard and you order, remember when you're ordering fabric on our site, you're ordering it in half yard increments. So if you want one yard of this print, the quantity in your checkout cart would be two, right? A half yard and a half yard, but you're not gonna get it cut up into two half yard chunks. Whatever the number is there, you'll get one continuous piece. So if you want two yards, just do a quantity of four, get it half, half, half and half again, and we'll do it all, all cut into the one yardage piece. And I think what I'm going to do this week, since we have the big uh, fabric cutting machine is that maybe the first five orders that we get, I will film myself or maybe Deborah, if she's coming into work, uh, cutting the fabrics for somebody so we can give y'all a shout out and be like, look, we're cutting the fabric for your order. I think that would be super fun. But these are some of the prints that we have for sale. I love to get blenders like these. This is like a light blue with some speckled white little bits. Super cute. You can check out what we have there. We are listing more throughout this week because um, we got to make room for more inventory type stuff. Okay. So let me just show these because we're going to come revisit this now that I am uh, going to talk next. I'm going to answer the next question on directional prints. But see this white one now we had a retreat last week the first crafty gemini quilt retreat of the year and it was on foundation paper piecing i'll show y'all one of the blocks we did because that's going to go into my little fussy cutting talk but look at this math print we sold some of this out there and some of the ladies that came we had a really great time some of them were buying up some of these fun prints so we've listed what we have left basically my little tossed hens look at these little chickens my purse that I carry around now, it's out there in the kitchen, but uh, my purse that I currently carry is my Sunday tote that I made in this little chicken fabric. It's super duper cute. So anyway, if you're looking for quilting, designer quality quilting cottons at a super discounted price, those of you that shop at quilt shops know $9 is absolutely clearance. Um, you can check us out at craftygemini.com slash shop and see what we have right there. And we'll be adding more um, this week to, to the inventory. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, Betty Wilma 44 says there's a lot of difference between brands too. She says, I like Michael Miller and Riley Blake both, but I find Riley Blake a little narrower, like 40 to 41 inches wide. And Michael Miller is a little too lightweight. So that's something else. The more you start using and 
using and trying, right, and working with different designer quality quilting cottons, you'll start to get familiar with the different brands. And now what um, Betty Wilma's uh, referencing in terms of 40 to 41 inches wide, that means the distance from selvage to selvage. So they're usually going to be around... Nah, they say 40 to 44. Sometimes you find that they're 45 inches. Sometimes you find that they're 42, 41. And so that's when they tell you in a pattern to cut, you know, a strip that measures 10 inches by the width of the fabric. It's going to account for whatever the width of the fabric on the bolt is. But usually it should be around 40 to 44. Like this one is a Robert Kaufman print. These Jade Tigers. And this one um, says it's 44 inches. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and answer the next question. We're talking about directional prints. So Don asks, I was wondering if you might be able to talk about, well, hold on. Just kidding, that wasn't Don. Tralisa asks, sometimes I have a fabric that isn't necessary, necessarily directional, but I would like to design or I would like the design to flow a certain way. For example, a zigzag print. So she's talking there about a geometric print, which is really fun and it's kind of like a great way into uh, working with directional prints. Say something like this, has these lines going in different directions. So although it's technically directional in terms of the lines are going one way, you can position it however you want because a line doesn't have to be vertical or horizontal, right? You can use the print however you see fit in the design. So she's asking, if I have a fabric that's not uh, necessarily directional and I want the design to flow a certain way, she says, I listen to you in my head saying audition it, which is something I always tell my students literally in all of my online courses. We work with different directional prints and that's something that I do. I will make the project typically in a non-directional print because that helps eliminate one additional factor that you need to troubleshoot. So if you're newer to a bag making project or something, I will walk you through how to make it with a non-directional print. But I also go in and share tips for those of you that do want to use directional print. So if you've never taken any of my online digital courses, you can check those out at our shop too, craftygemini.com slash shop. There's, I think, almost a hundred different courses there under PDF and video workshops for you to check out. Okay. Um, so she says, I hear you saying, I listen to you in my head saying audition it, and I still almost always cut the size, uh, cut the wrong size the first time. Do you have any best practices for cutting out directional fabrics or designs that you want to display in a specific way? So one is it's going to take some practice. So that's one of the main reasons as an instructor, I always tell my students like, the first time you make a new project, don't use a directional print. Because while you're busy following the instructions and going back and forth and pausing and replaying the video, you may cut a, 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 a specific piece of maybe a pocket or a front panel on a bag or something and you may cut it the wrong way. Then you won't even realize it until you've sewn it in place and then you like hold up the bag like, oh no. You know, the tigers are upside down or whatever, which happens to all of us. What I tend to do as a teacher is I don't like to set my students up for uh, mistakes or failures because I find that it kills the enthusiasm. And so then you're not as excited about trying the next project or taking your techniques and steps a step further. So again, if you don't feel too comfortable, I would always recommend that you start off with a non-directional print. So what are we talking about when we say directional prints? Okay. So this right here, I just mentioned, it can go either way, right? If I put this on the front of a bag, it can look like this and it looks fine. It could go like this and it looks fine. That's a non-directional print. Another one, this math lovers print here, there's all kinds of shapes and math equations and numbers and ge geometric stuff going on here and see how they're all tossed around. That means that yes, there's a lot going on, but it doesn't really matter which way it's going. So I could cut a piece out and use it in a, you know, in a pillow or a quilt this way, or I could also use it this way. And the graphic images here are still going to be displayed. Okay. Those are again, non-directional prints. A directional print would be like these guys. And I always give that example. It's usually like text that needs to read in a certain direction. It can be the face of a little character or the body of these little tigers in this instance. If I use this fabric in a project and I want these guys to be looking at me the way that they are right now correctly, right? It looks like one row they're facing this way, the other row they're facing that way, and it just alternates in the rows. I have to use it like this. I mean, let's, you don't have to. If somebody's looking that close to your stuff, you know, they need to like 
Tell them to turn their head to the side and look at it sideways if you use it in something sideways. But the idea is that you would like to display the tigers correctly, right? If I were to put these guys on the front of a quilt or a quilt block or something like this upside down, it's kind of like, whoop, you either sewed it in wrong if it was a square or um, you maybe oriented your fabric a little bit wrong, right? And this is the type of stuff that we want to avoid, especially for those of you that are perfectionists out there. I know students that want everything to be super duper perfect and when they make a mistake like this, they just feel so down. And so one of the ways that you can, um, it's tricky for me to say like what exactly to do because most of the people that do really well with this, it just comes naturally to them. But part of it has to do with what the design is of the project. So I'll give you an example because I brought my wallet out here. Where are you? Not here. I probably covered it up here. Yes, here it is. So here we have the bag part of my Kelly Cross body bag. And this is one of my online courses. Anyways, there's a front pocket here that's quilted, and you can see that I was using a directional print. There's unicorns, there's bunnies, and there are flowers, right? There's a little fox down here. This panel had to have been put like this because it would not look that great if I had the unicorn upside down. Does that make sense? So part of selecting the print that you want to go wear on your project is understanding where in the project it needs to, or it's going to end up being, okay? So... On the back here, same thing. Do you see the same fabric? The unicorn, bunny, trees, fox, and a tree stump, all this stuff. I cut it like this on purpose because, again, this would not look great if you turned my bag around and the unicorns were upside down. So this is a directional print. And so when you're making, and I'll talk about it specifically for a bag, when you're making a bag, there can be 37 pieces that you need to cut out. So if you don't know where each fabric piece goes, it's going to be really tricky for you to cut it out correctly. So imagine you're starting off with a bag. It's your first one. It has 27 or 30 some pieces for you to cut out and you want to use a directional print. That already is a recipe for a mess. Okay. Unless you're going to go super step by step and understand where each panel is going to go before you cut it. Chances are you're probably going to flip one of those panels over. Because when we cut our fabric, we cut along two different dimensions, right? The width and the height or length and width, however it's displayed on your pattern, people use different terminology. But this is a rectangle that was cut here, okay? If I were to have cut the same dimension of rectangle, but I would have cut it this way from my fabric, and this happens a lot to those of us that are um, a little bit more frugal with our fabric cuts and we want to make super efficient cuts, when you're working with a directional print, it's not the time to be efficient with those cuts because you may be turning it around to get the piece you need from a different angle and now you flip the design. So even in garment sewing, have you ever seen where a pattern might tell you if you want to match stripes or a design, make sure that you buy extra fabric because you're going to have some waste by having to scoot it over for it to match up. The same thing applies with cotton fabrics and these types of directional prints. I want to cut this chunk out. So in this case, I wanted these two unicorns here. So I had to move my ruler over to still get the dimension and have two of these guys instead of just having one unicorn in the center. So it's a lot of math and measuring and you have to have, you have, to have more fabric so that you can kind of envision, say this is a 10 inch by 13 rectangle. It's, I don't think it is, but let's say it was. I would be with my mind 10 inches this way and 13 and kind of going along the panel, the repeat and saying, okay, boom, this is the chunk of fabric I want. It has trees. I get a couple of the different little critters. This is where I want to cut. And so in order to do that, shifting back and forth so that you're using the directional print and you're basically fussy cutting, which we'll get into next, is you're fussy cutting that chunk of the print you got to have extra so that you can split the difference this way or that way to cut out the piece you need. Okay. So hopefully that it helps y'all. Um, Francois says that club is very pay is for very patient people. <laughs> uh, it's fun. You can watch, you know, you can watch the video step by step and you can rewind and replay. So it's great for people who need to see things a few more times versus just like a mention once and keep moving. All right. Um, okay. Denise says, I'm a math teacher on my lunch break. I think I might need that fabric. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. Okay, um, let's see. Yolanda says, hi, Vanessa, and chat frugal? 
I'm feeling attacked. I mean, I'm just saying, I, I feel you. And I'm only speaking to that from experience because that's me. I make, cutting is my favorite part of the quilting process. So the less fabric I can use to get out all my cuts, the better for me. But this always happens to me when I'm working with a directional print. So if I cut it, I'm like, oh no, that's what I get for being cheap. I was trying to force that piece out of here. And now I lost the directionality of the design, which it sucks when you do that. Okay. So these little guys, again, you would have to understand the dimensions of the cut that the project is calling for and which way it's going to be. If it's a square, it's not that bad because you can just turn, turn, turn the square until you get them oriented correctly and then sew it to whatever the pieces are that way. Okay. But once you get into strips or you get into rectangles, you definitely have to pay attention to the length and the width when you're cutting it. Okay. And just so y'all know, this is why I kept this here on the bolt most of the time. Okay. This varies a little bit, but most of the time when you have a print that repeats itself like this in quilting cottons, it will run like this. So notice where the selvage is here. And so the repeat is running selvage to selvage like this. So this is important to note as well so that you can see how many of these guys say you'll get across the width of the fabric instead of having to get that much more yardage in the other direction. If you're trying to fussy cut these guys out or do something with the lines of them, then you know they're running left to right from selvage to selvage and that's the correct way to orient them. Okay. So see what I'm saying? Some of you might be like, I, I don't know what she's talking about, but this is why I tell people when you're first making a project for the first time of anything, Stay away from directional prints because you're removing this extra thinking that you have to do here before you cut the fabrics out, okay? And there's so many gorgeous non-directional prints you can do that too. Like the tossed hens that we have in the shop, these are great. You can tell there's flowers, you can tell there's chickens, but it doesn't matter which way they go because every chicken is turned a little bit. And so this is like a tossed design, what would be called a tossed design, okay? So you can still get a little motif without it having to be displayed correctly. And then I'll just show y'all this one so you can see again another example of a directional print. Okay, you see the tigers? They have to be positioned like this in a project. Their their bodies are positioned differently, but the faces all have to be read like this top to bottom. So you want to make sure that you include it in there. Now the only time that it doesn't really matter too much is like if you're just using a directional print to coordinate say the strap of a bag or something where it's going to be cut up so narrow anyways say that was like a little handle or a strip or something, by the time you folded it and top stitched it, nobody's really going to be noticing. One, you may not even be able to tell what the design, like what the motif is, that it's an actual tiger, because all you're going to be getting is like pieces of the body in the different segments that are still shown. So in that case, I wouldn't worry too much about a directional print, but if you have a big chunk that's being displayed in the project, absolutely, you want to, you know, get that directionality right. Okay. Okay. So, um, next cool question, fussy cutting. Okay. Dawn asked, I was wondering if you might be able to talk about fussy cutting. Someone did a wallet from your mini bag two class with yoga frogs on it. And it's so cute. This is in our bag club group that she's probably saw posted. She says, I would love to learn, but have no idea where to start and how to figure out the process. Okay. So fussy cutting, we talked a little bit about it on this Kelly crossbody bag. It's missing the strap. Obviously it comes with a crossbody adjustable strap, but, um, we clip it on. So that's, I took it off. Uh, this was a fussy cut chunk of the panel, right? Because this specific print featured a lot of different things. If it was just one big unicorn inside, say like a floral thing, and I wanted to be to smack dab in the middle, then you would fussy cut it to split the difference of the center of the design so that you still get half of that measurement going this way for the back panel and half of that measurement going here. And that will ensure that that big fussy cut motif you want is smack dab in the middle. Okay. So fussy cutting can either be that like one specific focal piece of the, of the print design or something like this where I'm like, oh, I can cut this way a little bit, but then I'd only have one unicorn. But if I scoot over this way a little bit, you know, I can get two unicorns in. Okay. So both of that is, I would consider that fussy cutting. Now, a more precise thing about fussy cutting is something like this. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is my essentials wallet. A quick plug. I put this class on sale. It's $10 off right now only for this week. So because y'all are watching, if you want to learn how to make this wallet, you can get $10 off and you don't have to use a code or anything. If you just go to craftygemini.com uh, shop 
on the top right, you'll see a little kind of a magnifying glass. Type in Essentials Wallet, and it will pop up for you. You'll see the sale prices is, is active and current right there. Okay, so do you see this little wallet? And I'll twist this a little so that it lands exactly where, so you can see the fussy cutting really well. So we have a large flower here. We have this leaf, and this is fussy cutting, right? Because the flap is coming over this bottom piece, and it's basically repeated. If we have a look at this orange, this orange and white flower, then we have two green leaves. And when I lift it up, you see the orange flower and the two green leaves. This, believe it or not, <laughs> was not intentional, y'all. And this is very rare that it happened. But I wanted to show you what I mean by fussy cutting. It's like there's a partition in the design. There's a pocket in place, a strap that meets something. But when you have it together, it's still almost seamless of where the design is between the two pieces. Okay? This is almost never going to happen. This worked out because the measurement of my wallet happened to repeat in the same amount of space that it took me to cut these, sew the seam allowance, and they just, I mean, miraculously matched up. Because if you've ever made a bag or a pouch before that you know is made from one piece, you already know that if we have anything that folds and folds, if you orient it correctly in the directionality of the print this way, as it folds across the back, this top bit that comes over is going to be upside down. So in other words, say this is that panel, and I like to show it visually because it's a lot of math that goes into it, but for those of you that want to dabble in, you know, working with more directional prints and stuff, you got to really, one, you have to do it. Like you just have to make stuff so that you run into those mistakes and you're like, aha, now I see why that happened. Never to do it again, right? So say this is this, if I flip, say I flip, and then we're going to fold the bottom up and then we're going to fold and notice my tigers are going right. Okay. They're going correct. Look, when I fold this up, these are upside down, right? When I fold this down, these are upside down. So it affects if it's made up of multiple panels or if it's made up of just one panel that gets folded. So if we fold up, and we fold down, these guys are all upside down, and then the back of your project is correct. So the way around that, and those of you that have taken my online courses, when we talk about this for different bags, I always tell you, like, you'll have to make a cut in the fabric here, turn one of the pieces, and then sew it back together. So in other words, you're adding a lot more work for yourself. You have to make sure you have the math right, because you have to add a seam allowance down here. Otherwise, your panel will end up being shorter than it was designed to be, because it wasn't designed to have a cut in it. Okay. I know some of you out there do this all the time and you know exactly what I'm talking about. But those of you that are still like, how do they get that to work out like that? You have to cut it and turn a piece and then reorient it so that when you fold it, okay, it still works. And this is not going to be it. And I'm telling you, you can sit there and be like, but they're like going right. And then like when I fold, they're upside down. What, you know? So that is one of the issues with working with directional prints. It's just going to add a whole nother level of troubleshooting that you need to work out. But I always laugh at this project because the repeat of the florals, they, they don't have a set directionality to them. It just, they're all repeated along the same amount that just happened to magically fit for the piece I needed, which is pretty wild. I think when I went like this and in the video, when I looked at it, I was like, there's no way that that actually was fussy cut to work out, but it looks good. <laughs> it worked out. So you know what? If you don't try to fussy cut something, you might end up with a piece that does all by itself. Okay. All right. Let's see. Make sure I'm not missing anything here. Oh, Mary Grace says, as Bob Ross would say, a happy accident, right? In quilting and sewing, we call it um, a, de a design element, right? Whenever we make a mistake or we change something a little bit up that we didn't maybe intend to or initially, nobody has to know, right? Just another design element that we added, a unique one. All right. Margie says, it's easier to use non-directional fabric for me. It is, right? And if you like to sew, you like to quilt, you like to make gifts, and if you just like to do it for the fun of it, and you know that doing something like this, whether fussy cutting or having to work with a directional print and really focusing on is going to take away from the enjoyment of the whole process, just don't use them, you know? Or if it's just like a little pocket on something or one little motif, that's kind of an easier way to get into doing fussy cutting and um, 
and working with directional prints. But it, there's so many pretty, you know, toss designs or all over designs out there that you don't have to have to. So if you're someone who has used a directional print before and you just had an epic fail of a project and you just feel like sewing is not for you, don't think that. It was probably just the design, the print, you know? Pick something else and you should be good to go. All right. Oh, thank you, Cindy. She says, I love your teaching style, Vanessa. I taught for 35 years and I really appreciate your style. Well, I appreciate that comment. Thank you. Here's another little directional print. And I think this one is, is um, one of the ones for sale in the shop in two different colors with the navy background and with like a light minty color called bay or something like that. But this is a super cute design. Again, you could fussy cut these out, right? You can make them little patches. You can cut them around. And what I like about designs like this, this also helps you when it comes to fussy cutting and working with directional prints, you can also think about them in a different way. So these are like little medallions with a unicorn inside and each one is facing a different way. The legs are positioned differently, but notice in the background here in the Navy background, and I think they call this um, color Orion is how it's listed on the site on our site. There's more than a quarter of an inch around here, right? So if you wanted to use something like a Steam -a Seam 2 or a paper-backed fusible web and turn this into like a fabric sticker or a um, like a little patch or something, that would look super cute and you could totally do that. You know, there's nothing that says you have to cut this out in a whole chunk, right? This would make a really cute border as well. Say for like a little girl's quilt or a little baby quilt or something, you could cut these guys in a strip. I would cut a little bit into the next row so that I preserve all this navy background fabric and just add an additional quarter inch so that my seam allowance will finish just to the left of the side of the next medallion row. And a strip like that would be an easy way for you to get. And let me just measure because I want to see what this would get me. So I'm positioning my quarter inch line along that next one. And this is kind of like fussy cutting, right? We would be fussy cutting but for a border. So if I wanted to fussy cut these unicorns in their little medallions along the one vertical strip for a, a, some type of a border, I would go over to the left here. Let me just make sure y'all can... The fabric is a little dark, so my apologies for that. But you know what? I'll do this. Let me open it up. Maybe we can see it better. And yes, they're upside down, but we're just talking about a vertical strip here. So let's say I was going just over here. So I'm putting the edge right before I get into the blank navy space on the quarter inch line of my ruler. So I'll be cutting a quarter inch into that, let's say, like that. And then if I measure over to that same point on this one, that's a three inch strip. So let me go ahead and cut it because I want to see how this would look. And that way you can see visually, you know, some different ways for y'all to think about using the, the fabric prints that you have. So first I'm going to cut the selvage off. Okay. And then I'm going to cut it like this doubled up because my ruler is too short for the panel. But let's do it right there. I'm measuring a, one, any line, just one line off my ruler against the fold down here. And I'm going to cut. Okay. So see what I was saying? This little bit from the other row of medallions is going to get eaten up in the seam allowance. So instead of, and this is a good tip, some of y'all might think, well, I'm going to cut that off completely. But then you're thinking, you know, so that you don't have it in your project. But remember, you have that seam allowance to work with. So if I were to cut it here, I'm losing a half inch because if I cut it here, yes, I will have gotten rid of all this from the other medallion, but then your seam allowance from then on is going to be an additional quarter inch. So guess what happens? You end up with a finished strip that's eating up a little bit of the medallions of the ones you want to keep. So think about that. If you have this excess of plain fabric in the background, go into the next one a little bit so that when this gets sewn, you don't touch the actual design that you want displayed and you still have that background there. So this is kind of how I would wrap my head around fussy cutting, in this case, a strip of this, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So I'm gonna put the quarter inch on that right side edge and I said it was gonna be three anyway, so I already know that if I position this fresh cut edge on the three inch line of my ruler, if I cut here, it's going to be the exact strip that I need. So these guys are on display. 
It's actually going to be a little bit shy of three because I'm seeing a little bit of that still popping up. More like two and seven eighths. I would bump up another ruler there, but I'm going to come around here and just cut this a week. So see? So I have now fussy cut this entire strip of unicorns where one side edge is going to get turned under, right? Because it's going to get eaten up in the seam allowance. I'm just going to finger crease it so you can kind of get an idea of how that would look. And so this is one way to fussy cut. You could also just take the center of your design and measure equally to the right, to the left, so that it's centered where you want it to be. So see how that would look. I don't have any of the other, the, the little flower pieces there, or the edge of the, the little wreath going around the unicorn popping up here, but I also have the full medallion that's going to end up being displayed, and the same thing would apply to this side. Okay, so you could end up with a super cute little border. Again, if you wanted to just fussy cut one, you would just split the difference here and here as well so that you account for your quarter inch seam allowance around all four sides instead of just these two. Okay, so yes, <laughs> Francois says that seam allowance, how many of us are forgetting it? Absolutely, that's something once you start designing and doing stuff, you'll always, you'll remember it. It only takes a couple times of, of cutting the wrong thing, and now you're like, it's too short. Why didn't I include that extra little bit? But yes, that just comes with practice, okay? All right. Uh, oh, great. Thank you, Yuna. She says, such a good pointer about the seam allowances. Great, great, great. So yeah, those are just some ideas. Again, if it's too much for you, just don't worry about working with directional prints. We have um, several. We have directional prints that are in the shop too, and we also have non-directional prints, like this math one that we talked about earlier. But, you know, feel free to just leave those out in the meantime, or if there's like a really pretty motif that you want, start off maybe fussy cutting it and using it just for one segment of a larger project. But I would stay away from your first attempt at something being like all these different directional prints and fussy cutting things, okay? So... The more you work or the more you practice and the more different types of fabrics you work with, the better you will get, all right? So hopefully these tips helped y'all. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions. If you have a question that you'd like me to consider for a future show, make sure to use the link that we put in the description box. If you're on YouTube, it's in the video description box. And if you're watching us on Facebook, it is in the caption post for this video, okay? So thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate your questions and your comments, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.